What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm here with another random video because these are just how my videos go. They seem to be random and I don't expect to film one and then I just like, I'm gonna film a video. Let's do it. So, <laughs> that's usually how it goes. Um, so, I just, um, I had tennis all in go, so, um, that's why I'm in what I'm wearing, what I'm wearing. Um, and yeah, I probably look like I have been sweating, which is the truth. But anyway, so, um, today I wanted to share with you guys something that has, I was reading my devotionals actually the other day, we had no school yesterday, um, but it's something that I was reading my devotionals the other day. And I wanted to share that with you guys, <clears throat> which is in Exodus 23, 29. And so this is after the Israelites are out of Egypt. And um, yeah, so they've been traveling for quite a while. And I'm going to read this verse to you guys. So, and you can read it too, Exodus 23, 29. I will send hornets in front of you and they will drive the... Bear with me, these are funky names. Hivites, Canaanites, and Hethites away from you. I will not drive them out ahead of you in a single year. Otherwise, the land will become desolate and wild animals will multiply against you. I will drive them out little by little ahead of you until you have become numerous and take possession of the land. So when I saw this verse, two of the words that really stuck out to me was one, well not really words, but like phrases, um, not... I will not drive them out ahead of you in a single year. And also when he says, um, little by little. So for me personally, in all aspects of my life really, um, especially where sports is a good example to kind of relate this to um, your life. Um, when I do something, whether it's like free throws, serves, volleys, shots, post moves, whatever it is, um, it's frustrating when you don't get it the first time and so you just want to get it all done right now you want to be perfect at it but that's not always how it goes it takes little by little by little to get to where you want to be and so these the Israel, Israelites are kind of feeling this God's saying I'm not going to do it in a single year I'm gonna do it little by little which I read that I'm just like little by little that kind of stinks I mean I'm sure a lot of us could testify to that it does stink you know, we're people who like things right away, who want to learn things right when it happens, right away, blah, blah, blah. And it's frustrating when things don't happen that way. But there was a reason for God leading them little by little. And that was because the land would become desolate and wild animals would multiply against you. So there was a reason that God was not going to do it in a single year. And that it was little by little for them to get there. And that was because the land wasn't ready for them yet. If they had arrived there, then things would not have gone the way they would have liked. Um, the animals would have multiplied against them, and they would have been more numerous. So little by little, God was not taking away from them. He was adding to them, because they are adding in numbers. Um, and you will become numerous and take possession of the land. But it was little by little. It didn't happen all at once. And so that's, I think that's just something that, you know, we can take into consideration in our own lives when things don't happen the way we want them to. And that goes outside of sports, um, just life in general. Um, you know, it's a process. Sometimes it stinks, you know, but um, I thought that was really encouraging. So I hope that encouraged you guys as well. It's leading you to where you want you to be. Um, so don't be discouraged when you're met with little things little by little by little not just all at once and in less more than a single year because God's timing is not our timing so and man am I saying that um anyways so I hope you guys enjoyed that and were encouraged by that as I have give that a check out whatever that is <laughs> go check it out and um so I thought I would add some vlog footage to this video because it's just random stuff pretty much life lately um here on the farm oh no i'm just kidding but just life lately um we've had a lot of delays no school 
time with friends, um, random clips, you guys will see that in the next few parts of this video. And so, yes, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Toots. What is it? We have a curate? Decaf. Right. We're quite impressed. Oh. Yes, we are. Well, friends, I forgot my sandals, so I gotta go with the tennis shoes. <laughs>so I just want to declare something up those clips um, in our youth group we all put our money together and we um, got our youth group leaders a cake because it was their anniversary 
and it was Sophie's idea, so shout out to you, Sophie. And so though, I wasn't able to be there when they gave them the cake, so I had Ella, Sophie, and Melon do a little bit of filming for me so you could see the reaction of them getting the cake because I wasn't there. So, and because you guys saw the cake in the other videos and you're probably like, what is this cake? So I just thought I would clear that up for you guys. So, what's up you guys? Sitting here and I thought I'd share with you guys two of the things that really stuck out to me as I was doing my devos this morning. So, let me get my Bible. <laughs> but anyways, so, um, I was reading in Exodus today and, um, what was the first? Oh yeah, first we'll go with Nehemiah. So, in Nehemiah 1, chapter 4, um, it's talking about how Nehemiah was just very upset. Um, I have it written down here in my notas. So it says, when I heard these words, I sat down and wept. I mourned for a number of days, fasting and praying before the God of heaven. So that was Nehemiah in chapter 1, verse 4. But then we also know Nehemiah as the one who in chapter 8 said, do not grieve because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So it's kind of like Nehemiah went through this time of, I mean, he was really upset. He was mourning. He didn't really understand what was going on. But then he prayed to God, which is in the end of the first verse, and praying before the God of heaven. So it's kind of like he learned then that the joy of the Lord was his strength. And so in chapter 8, he was able to tell the people, um, do not grieve because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So it's kind of like Nehemiah learned that. So then when... The, the people he was with started to mourn and get upset and confused. He was able to tell them, hey, do not grieve because the joy of the Lord is your strength. I thought that was pretty cool. And also, um, I was in Exodus today um, because um, some people in our youth group are doing like a study of the Bible and stuff. And um, one of the verses, I can't remember, I'll put it on the screen. But it said, and Moses talked to God like he was a friend. Something like that. And the more I read through Exodus, the more I could see how true that was. Because, like, Moses just was always talking to God. He was telling him, he asked God questions. He was telling them how he felt. He was telling God how he felt. You know, when the Israelites would um, start getting on Moses, then he would go talk to God about it. So he's always, like, talking to God in communication with him. And so that verse that says, Moses talked to God like he talked to a friend was like so true because he really did. And so that kind of made me think about my own prayer life. You know, am I talking to God like I do a friend? Do I always go to him when things go wrong or just whatever the case is? Um, I honestly don't think I do. So that was something to think about today. But anyway, so that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Everything that you just said is my favorite thing to do every day. <laughs> oh yes, not your forever. 